Wait for me! Who are these guys? Overdo it. Handbill says alive. <laughs> what? Morning, Zeke. That's Mr. Tyler, Denny Bastard who pistol whips me. Somebody woke up feeling prickly. Oh, I was just dreaming about a beautiful girl I know down at Saltillo. Imagine my disappointment to wake up and see you. Anyone ever tell you you got a face like a burned boot? <laughs> now that other horse is gone. And no sign of the third rider. Well, I don't suppose you unfortunate boys have any clue who it is you're robbing, do you? We ain't bandits. Clear as day. But I don't see no badgers. Because we ain't lawmen. Ugh, bounty hunters then. And from the looks of it, some of the worst I've ever seen. That's mighty bold coming from a man on the ground looking up, friend. Uh, he prefers Mr. Tyler. Oh, I'll be sure to have them carve that in the tree they're probably gonna hang you from. Neither one of you know, huh? <laughs> I am astonished. <laughs> some bounty hunters. You two can't tell the difference between a skunk and a house cat. Dutch, I got the feeling he thinks we're missing something. Yeah, I'm picking up on that. Hey, why don't you quit beating the devil around the stump and just fill us in on your little secret? Information isn't free. Neither are you. So we understand each other. We do. And you're a man of your word? I am. You won't go back on it now? Never do. All right, here it is. I see the both of you just standing there grinning at me when not 30 paces to your backside. There's the real price. Well? Well what? He's trying to hold clean through his face. I can't make him out at all. You couldn't aim lower? Oh, well, excuse me. It didn't seem important at the time when he was trying to kill me. Who is that? Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to the dearly departed Benicio Morales. That's Moonshine Morales. Lizard's tooth himself. What do you say? He says that's Benicio Morales. This is Benny the Stallion. How do we know you're not lying? And you know the stories. Anyone wearing a six gun knows about Morales. Then you probably heard the one. About the Keyshawn natives who inked a little scorpion just above his heart, providing you didn't blow a hole in it. Hey, take a look at his chest. He got a scorpion, all right. If this here's Morales, who's that other guy? Useless. Well, I'll be damned. I outgunned the real rattlesnake himself. 
Did you hear that, Waco? We were all riding pretty quick there. You could have hit him by accident. Oh, you horse's ass. That was marksmanship and you know it. And they'll sing songs of your glory all throughout the heartland. Now, if you two would just untie me, I'll take one of them horses and ski daddle. Now, why on God's green earth would we do that? Because you said you would. Waco, did you ever hear me make a deal like that? Nope. Uh, but you said you was a man of your word. I am. But it's not my fault if you infer something incorrectly. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. That body over there's got to be worth five times what I am, alive or dead, in any county west of the Mississippi. That's true. It is. And you are in hostile border country. We are? Yes, we are. So, any bounty hunter with a lick of sense north of his ears knows that the move here is to take that body and hightail it to the nearest town sheriff. I'm only going to slow you down. Your chances of being robbed and killed out here or me escaping is not worth the price on my meager little handbill. Yeah. You know, that, uh, that does sound smart. <sighs> so you'll let me go? Nope. Not a chance. Ha! <laughs> I figured it out. Oh, we're in for it now. Well, I recognize the name, but my head's a bit scrambled from earlier. You's the Waco kid, ain't you? Bare knuckle boxing champion? Yeah, I am. <laughs> you are famous. Oh, my daddy took me to one of your title fights when I was just a boy. Oh yeah, which one? The one you lost. <laughs> He don't have to talk when we turn him in, does he? Well, isn't this just a day for celebrities? We got a dead one, and another whose career is just as dead. Say, what exploits was you known for when you were younger, Dutch? The kind of daddies don't bring their boys to see. <laughs> you know, he's right, though. We can't camp out here in the wide open. Not with a body this valuable. What was that town we passed a while back? Or, uh, or Lindo, beautiful gold. If we keep riding, we can be there by nightfall. What do you think? Boom town with a name like that? Sounds like a blast. Somebody forgot to put the boom in boom town. More like doom town. Looks like the sheriff's office up ahead. Evening, gentlemen. What can I do for you? You the sheriff? Afraid not. Deputy, Elijah Stone. Well, Deputy Stone, you would be so kind as to round up the sheriff? We got some turkeys to trade. Zeke Tyler, you back so soon? Well, what can I say? It's hard to keep an angel out of paradise. How's your sister, Eli? and still drink your sorry carcass under the table. <laughs> well, you tell her I'm sorry. The doctor promised it would clear up in a few weeks. Well, I can see you two are acquainted. Yeah, old Zeke here, he's been staying in town the last season or so. Well, it looks like he ventured out and got himself into some trouble again. He's been a wanted man a whole lot longer than a season. Mister? We don't have bounty hunters around here. Some folks just like to be left alone. Yeah, well you do tonight. Charges are listed. Oh, hold on, one of these is handwritten. We couldn't find a law office between hell and this town. But I think you'll recognize the name.
trying to tell me that that stiff there really Benicio Morales peel rider himself tattoo and all oh bullwhip Ben I'm impressed still and all you're all gonna have to wait till tomorrow sheriff don't pay out except from sun up to sundown don't suppose he'd make an exception here. This one's been baking in the sun all day. And this one's been running our patience down so far. He's in debt for it. Well, you're just gonna have to endure their company until tomorrow. But you don't have to worry about losing your catch. This here's a nice, safe, sleepy little town. If it's so safe, what was that? Bullfrogs. Uh-huh. I don't suppose you could recommend a place for us to sleep for the evening that ain't got no bullfrogs. Everything this side of the border's closed up for the night. But on the south side of town, cantina's still open. You boys should head on down there. Soak up some of the local flavor until morning. Let me tell you a story about the deed that I have done. Murdered my true lover with the barrel of my gun. She begged me not. Go, 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 go. Two whiskeys, please. Por supuesto, senor. Gracias. Hey, uh, you wouldn't have a place we could stay for the evening, would you? I have a room upstairs. That'll do great. Gracias. Hello, darling. What's a tiger lily like you doing in a cow trough like this? Oh, don't mind the ropes. I was just practicing my career as an escapist. <laughs> Wouldn't mind tying you up. They say I'm a real artist. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. If his brains were dynamite, he wouldn't have enough to blow his nose. Certainly seems explosive either way. Well, now who's feeling prickly, huh? Can a condemned man have a few simple pleasures? Which uh, whiskey's mine? The one you pay for. You're making a bounty off of me. And until we do, I'm afraid we can't afford any more drinks. Dos whiskeys, senorita. <laughs> Boom, one, two, three. <laughs> he says, meet me outside the mine. I said, you keep running your mouth. I didn't think I would go up there. Hola, amigos. <laughs> Say, I don't suppose any of you boys is boxers, huh? Boxio, El Luchador. See, si. we can box. Are you asking us to fight you? I don't think you would win, my friend. No, I was just having a little private conversation with my famous friends over there at Waco. That's the Waco kid, by the way, uh, for those who are wondering. And he was just telling me how fond he was of Mexican women. So if any of you have mothers or wives or sisters or daughters, you better watch out. This is what. Tells me, hey, it is him. <laughs> Please, Mr. Waco, I, 
I love to box. Could you show us some of your moves? I'm sorry, kid. My brawling days are over. Please, just, just one quick round, like a warm-up. For me, it would be my honor. It's not gonna happen, kid. Sorry. We're exhausted. We're heading up to our room. Let's go, Waco. His honor. Nothing serious. <laughs> just a little warm up. Exactly, yeah, it's just a warm up. A warm up with a champ. <laughs> a little slap box. Yeah, okay, sure, sure. Don't overdo it. <laughs> All right, let's see what you got, kid. Oh, what in the hell is this? What? Now, don't you go nowhere. I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, evening, man. Pardon the interruption. Uh, I think it might be best if we move you to another table. Oh, is there going to be an exhibition? I guess you could call it that. But sometimes these things get a little rowdy. Understood. So what is that you're reading? Dracula, Brown Stoker. Ah. Yeah, I just finished that one myself about a month and a half ago. Really? How'd you like it? I quite enjoyed it. I guess my favorite part was... Oh, no, please. I, I only just started. I understand. Uh, my name's Dutch Langford. Rosemary O'Rourke. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Likewise. Uh, what brings you to Orlando, Mr. Langford? Uh, my partner and I are traveling through. We're doing a little bounty hunting. Ah, exciting. Yeah. Are you... On the hunt? Not at the moment, no. Uh, in fact, uh, we got us a nice little high dollar bounty earlier today. I see. And that high dollar bounty wouldn't be the man making it for the door right now, would it? Oh, no, he's dead. He's tied up on the horses. Now, that other idiot is a... Hey. Wait, go get him! Huh? <laughs> Okay. Excuse me, man. Get back here. Come on, whoa, hey. Come on. I got you. Are you done now? Get your hand. Calm down. No, I'm not. Come down. Calm down. Calm down. Whoa! <laughs> 
out of here. Sheriff's ready to see you boys now. Body inside yours too? Nope. He's useless. I don't think he likes you. <laughs> oh. Think they'll refund our room? Not a chance. Are right, you ready? Oh. oh. Be careful. Really, Waco? So, who's the body stinking up my porch? Benicio Morales. The Slim Reaper. The Sideways Scorpion. He preferred the Tabasco knife. And I'm the man that killed him. Sure did. Well, unfortunately, boys, I can't pay out a bounty that size in one day. Boys are gonna have to wait around a while till I can scrounge up enough cash. I thought this was a gold town. <laughs> so how long do you expect that to be? We weren't planning on staying long. That will be when Thaddeus Vincent decides to make his next deposit. Hello, gentlemen. Sheriff Perlwood, I do hate to intrude, but I'm afraid I must insist. I have had quite a time trying to get an audience with you, and the matter that I need to discuss is urgent. Well, be that as it may, you're gonna have to wait your turn. See, uh, I'm having a conversation with these fine gentlemen. Sheriff, I understand. Now, nah, please, no need to send her away on our account. Our business here is done. Anyway, hey deputy, why don't you, uh, why don't you show us over to the undertaker? <laughs> I'd love to show you to the undertaker. Ma'am? Good luck. It appears you have an opening in your schedule. So there is. <clears throat> As I mentioned in my letters, my name is Rosemary O'Rourke. Mm -hmm. I work in close connection with an orphanage in Boston that has sent hundreds of children out west on the orphan trains. And my job is to follow up on the children's well-being, make sure they're in loving, good homes with thoughtful families. Yeah, I've, I've read your letters. Superb. Then you know that there are several orphan trained children that I have not been able to locate, despite my considerable effort. It's a large county. I've traversed much of it. With a lot of farms. I've been to all of them. Those children did not leave Oro Lindo. This is a border town. People go missing all the time. Yes, but these are children, Sheriff. Children have gone missing, and that matters. Dismissal of the subject is most out of the question. Now, it would be very helpful if you could provide me some sort of list of local citizens or shop owners that may have taken someone in. I assume your benefactor, Mr. Thaddeus Vincent, will be on that list as well. Sure. Miss, we can get you a list, but it'll take us a day or so. In a day or so. Much obliged. Thank you, gentlemen.
You've done it this time. Well, you know, I'm impressed as hell that Thaddeus can shave a nape and teach it to talk. What other tricks do you know, monkey boy? Can't wait to squash you. <laughs> you better buy me flowers first. Besides, you know you can't touch me unless the master lets you off the leash. Move. <laughs> Usted tiene que entender una cosa, señor Vincent. Mi familia, all the families in this town, we understand the way things work. We are not blind whose name is greeted on the wood beams every time a new building goes up. I wouldn't have a home if not for the loans that you provided. And I am more than happy to pay for them back. My brother Caleb as well. He works in your minds every day. He doesn't complain, he doesn't make trouble. But I do see his pain every morning and I watch him drag himself home every night. Yo no pido limosna, señor Vincent. I have no illusions for charity in this world. My brother doesn't know I'm here. But I come to say that we are good people who wants to see a real step forward for all our hard work, not a step back. A small leniency on the interest, Stephen. As a self-made man, I'm sure you understand that. <laughs> my, my, my. Miss Salazar is a, uh, a display of passion and rhetoric I have not seen from a politician in years. And believe me, they come by the wagon load to this humble little country house of mine. That was quite the performance. Mr. Vincent, I did not come here to perform. Only speak the truth. Yes, of course. Everyone endeavors to speak the truth. But the truth is like anything else between heaven and hell. It is entirely subject to the whims of those who are in possession of it. Truth, Miss Salazar, is like a tool to get what one wants, to fire at someone. Mr. Vincent, there is nothing I'm asking for here that will deprive you. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There it is. You've now gone from the realm of your truth into the realm of my truth. Your truth, Miss Salazar, is based upon what you see, what your people see. And that is not what I see. You see a cow and know it to be a meal. I see a cow and know it to precede a herd. You see a hut and know it to be a home. I see a hut and know it to proceed a thousand just like it. Your people saw a hole in the ground and said, Nay, thou shalt not go there because there be demons. But not I. Because I knew what God left in there for me. Gold. We are not alike. And I do not understand. So, the subject of your half-brother. Your half-brother is a drinker and a rebel rouser. You know, maybe, perhaps, if he were to spend a little less of his leisure time working on his right hook, he would be less desperate. But, I can see that he is a special prize to you. I could treat him as one of my special prizes. Say my prize horse. Do you know what I do to them, Miss Salazar, when they no longer perform for me? I put a bullet in their head. Put them out of their misery. 
and I replace them with something that benefits me. Am I clear? There will be no change to the repayment schedule, Ms. Salazar. I do not care one continental for your disposition. You and your people will pay accordingly. Be blessed on the way out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is one feisty chili pepper. Uh, 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 uh. Do not sit in the furniture, Zeke. <laughs> How did everything go? Oh, it, uh, you know, it went great. <laughs> Well, that's great. Send in Benicio. Yeah, about that. Uh, Benicio is, uh, he's, he's, he's... Is he indisposed? Presupposed. That's, that's the word I was looking for. And, uh, well, it, it's, uh, complications arose and uh, things being what they are. He's, he's... Dead as a doornail, collecting flies in a wooden shed behind the undertaker's shop, you desert canary. You nailed it. <laughs> is that what you call real great, you incompetent fool? I paid a small fortune for that killer. I'm forced to endure 37 asinine nicknames anytime somebody whispers about him. Well, there's more than that. And lo and behold, lo and behold, not even a legend can survive riding with the likes of you, Zeke. Please. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. Not the face. How many teeth, boss? No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, no, no, we, 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 we was bushwhacked by Bounty hunters. They popped off a lucky shot on Morales, but I wasn't lying before. Well, that was afterwards. See, we did the job we were sent to do. We got the deed. The farmer's not gonna be a problem anymore. I promise you that. The farmer's dead? That's right. I did it myself. Popped him right there. <laughs> I dropped his ass down a well. Oh, the land is yours to dig, boss, but I would not drink the water. <laughs> That was my favorite uncle growing up. My condolences. But you didn't tell us that part before. He should have sold me that land years ago. Family is only a title of import as long as you give it leave to be. Zeke, you remember that. I always said that. Where's the deed? <laughs> well, it's a cute story. <laughs> You're gonna laugh. Uh, it's in my saddlebags, and the bounty hunters have those. But if you send the bearded lady and me, we'll take care of it lickety split. No, not right now. But I want you to keep an eye on them. We'll do it when the time is right. Send in the other boys when you're on your way out. And Zeke, do better. I'm trying my damnedest, sir. Can I have my gun back, please? Well, that's just being rude and spiteful. I'm gonna have to pick those up. Ammunition is expensive these days, and you're just being careless. What if the boss steps on? That's not right. Hey, 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 hey! What you reading there, boss? Love letters from a um, concerned citizen. Oh, there's this girl in Abilene. She used to write me questions. Nope, never heard of him. Oh, I see. Uh, the cobbler and the blacksmith both told me you adopted. I truly hope that I'd find these children here. Well, sure, I adopted. Had great success with the orphan train. Two little boys and a little girl raised right here in this shop. Poor things, barely knew their folks back east before the cough took them. I wasn't ready to be no daddy though, I'll tell you that. They call me Gabe, same as any. I raised them right, though. They're good kids, all of them. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Are they around? They haven't been around for years. Around here, we tend to bring them up pretty quick, and they let out the second they feel like they're old enough to. Like I said, I'm no daddy. I couldn't have kept the shop afloat without them, though. 
because uh, Lord knows Mr. Vincent's got us all up to our damn ears in debt. The girl. Her name wasn't Violet, was it? No, no, her name was Sarah. I see. <clears throat> well, I'd still love to record all the names and ages, if you don't mind. You mentioned Mr. Thaddeus Vincent. I've heard his name mentioned multiple times today alone. And I have found it quite common for a person of means to adopt quite frequently. Have you ever seen Mr. Vincent or one of his representatives at the train station when the orphans arrive? Oh yeah, they're out there every time. Um, you know what, ma'am? I must be mistaken. I, uh, I am old. My memory does slip often. I, uh, just don't think I can help you today. you like, miss. You'll never be as sorry as a mining man. Uh, here, well, I don't believe I saw a nugget like you in this town before. <laughs> What's a town like you doing in a woman like this? <laughs> really, sir, the day is far too young to be in such a state. Do not lean upon this man. What state? This is the state of Thaddeus Vincent, where men are things to be leaned upon. He knows it as well as I do. And you, you can lean on me anytime you like. <laughs> I'm real hands handy. Uh. How about you hold on to these? Oh! Ah! Why don't you put that toothpick away, son, before somebody gets hurt? You want to remove your hand? Don't overdo it. What? Thanks. <laughs> Looky what I found. Get her, Concho. <laughs> Night. Hey, 
Oh, hold it right there, son. You don't want this. Yeah, that was a fine scrap and all. If you skin leather, it becomes something totally different. It's not a fight you wake up from. You ain't that fast, old man. Well, that was quite the Fandango. Well, good afternoon, Miss O'Rourke. Dutch, way you go. Ma'am. Lovely to see you both. How are you enjoying your stay? Fair enough, I reckon. Although I am beginning to notice a pattern. Yeah, every time she's around, I get hit in the face. <laughs> that wasn't what I was referring to. Well, seems you gave quite a bit more than you got. First rule of a fight. Indeed. I have worked up an appetite. What do you boys say to joining me for a bite? Southways a bit. I don't care too much for the hospitality on this side of town. Oh, here, let me get back. I feel the manners improving around us already, ma'am. You should start a charm school. So how do you do that? You just, you just, yeah, cool. Roy, these men, these boys got themselves something to report. It's a street fight, Eli. Ain't what they say. So you want me to take testimony of a man who loses a fight yet claims otherwise? I do that, I'm gonna have to take testimony of every pair of hands in this town. We have ourselves a duty to act, don't you? Pearl, I am so glad you're here. I would like to report a crime. Pearl would. Right. More importantly, there's been a vicious attack on men in my employ, initiated with their backs turned no less. The cowardice of some men, it never ceases to sadden me. I trust Pearl, Sheriff, that you will treat this crime with severity and sentencing that it deserves. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to my daughter, adopted daughter. Liz, come, John. It's okay, take my hand. Good. We need to uphold the laws in this town. If for no other reason, do it for the children. Mm. I'm glad to see that you're taking justice so seriously. I've taken the liberty of forming you a posse, starting with myself. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll order something. You boys grab us a table. Well, boys, do me in. Better yet, pass me the California Bible and let me have a shuffle. Have you ever heard of three card money? Another time, Waco. We got grub coming. They had stew, stew, and stew. <laughs> I didn't know what you prefer, so I went with the stew. Hope that's all right. I guess it'll just have to stew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Miss O'Rourke? Oh, Rosemary is just fine. Rosemary? You know what Waco and I are doing here, but uh, we never had the chance to ask you. Care to share? Not to pile on, but I'm quite curious myself. Well, have you ever heard of the orphan trains? 
Mm -hmm. Sure have. I've heard them called mercy trains. I always wonder if that was strictly true. Well, it mostly is. However, I have recently found the records lacking as to the well-being of those children once they're adopted off the trains. So, I have taken it upon myself to follow up, make sure they're properly cared for. My sister and I, we were sent out west on an orphan train. So I know firsthand just how rough of a life that can be. And therefore, I am doing my best to prevent other children from having rough lives as well. Yeah, well, as heavy as that seems, that's a mighty fine cross to bear. So what about your sister? Does she, she work with you? I am sure she would. Uh, so, uh, are there children from the orphan train here in Orlando? And if, have you found them? Uh, are, they, are they okay? As it turns out, there is suspiciously little information I can find regarding their whereabouts. The sheriff and the deputy are about as useful as a couple of songbirds in an orchestra. Yeah, we've had a similar opinion. Hmm. My only lead is the troubling encounter I had with the shopkeeper. He was very forthcoming right up until Thaddeus Vincent's men made their appearance. So this Vincent character, you think he has something to do with these children missing? His name keeps popping up in all the worst places. I am not sure, but I have decided I am not leaving until I find them. I apologize for intruding, but I know where the children are. What? You do? Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. That was a little rude. <laughs> what I mean is, what is your name? My name is Lita Salazar. I live in town with my brother, Caleb. He works in Mr. Vincent's gold mines. So there is gold in this town. Harley. The town itself never sees it. The gold is mined by its people, by its state's hoarder with Senor Vincent. That and half of the town's theft. And the children? The mines. That's where the children are. What? That can't be. It's true. Most people in town don't know. Mr. Vincent tries to keep it a secret, but my brother Caleb has seen it. Caleb! ¿Qué pasa? Ven aquí. Estoy ganando. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> oh, Senor Waco, so good to see you. My spine is crooked. Yeah, I think I left a tooth or two on the floorboards over here. <laughs> Very fun. I, we should go another round. Easy. Only the first round's free. Hi. Kayla, it's time to be serious. We're talking about Mr. Vincent. <sighs> what do they want to know? Is it true that he has children working in the mines? <sighs> it is. I've seen them with my own eyes. Only certain workers, those of us who go in the deepest, have seen them. Mr. Vincent uses the children to get into the crevices and other places that myself and the other adults can't fit into. We try to make it as easy as we can for them in there. Sometimes we even squeeze ourselves down to keep them from doing anything. But it's dangerous, and we're watched closely. Sometimes his men come down with us, and, well... When that happens, sometimes the children don't always come back out. And you've never done anything to stop him? It's not that easy. It must be. I'm sure you've heard the expression, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Well, I doubt that applies to evil hands. Something must be done. No offense, senorita, but that's easy to say as someone who does not live here. 
My brother is right. His name is in everything. He owns the land. He owns our livelihoods. He owns the law. Anyone who stands up to Vincent end up dead. But you are right too. I am tired of just surviving. If I am going to live, it has to be for something. We have to stop Vincent. Win or lose, we have to try. I've known bad men all my life. I rode with them and I've chased them down. But one thing I know for certain, a bad man that's got away with something for so long ain't gonna stop. It's gonna come down to a fight. And when it does, you got Waco and me. Damn right. Ain't nothing worth getting up for like putting bruises on a bully. I'm in. A lot of people are scared. But if anyone can lift this town up, it's Lita. And I'm with her. Well, then we have our team. And we start by rescuing those children. That's him, Mr. Vincent. Looks like a snake on stilts. That's Lizzie. Uh, she's one of the missing children. Ooh, that vulture. Miss O'Rourke, I presume. That is Vincent. Charmed to meet you. Mr. Vincent. Normally I'd say pleased to make your acquaintance, but... Yes, of course you are. My acquaintance pleases everyone. Dutch, are you pleased? Nope. I can assure you, gentlemen, that you will not be in a jesting mood when we are through. I shall address you last. But first, I came all the way down here to allay the lady's fears. I would like to present to you my daughter, whom I love as if she were my own blood. Lizzie, come say hi to Mr. Warren. Shake her hand like a lady. Hello. Hi, Lizzie. It is very nice to meet you. Are you quite happy in your home with Mr. Vincent? Her father. And yes, she is. She has everything that she could want or need. I was speaking to her. Hmm. Lizzie, when you arrived at that train station, you were with other children, right? Oh, my dear Miss O'Rourke, I'm sure you do not mean to offend, but you're dealing with things you do not understand. It is quite callous of you to bring up the children in front of my sweet daughter. I try to shield her from having to think about such things. However, since the subject has been broached, I can see that you will not be satisfied until it is aired. The children, they were. Naughty, thieves, runaways. Isn't that right, Lizzie? Go ahead and tell them. Tell them about how they woke you up in the middle of the night, about how they were going to steal from your father, catch a train to Wichita, about how they wanted you to go with them, but you would never dream of doing such a thing. It's a shame to see them 
fall into infantile selfishness. But kids these days, what are you going to do? It's so hard to find a good one. Now that you know the truth, Miss O'Rourke, I trust that we will never have to speak of this again. You can see how it hurts my daughter so. And that breaks my heart. She's been through so much already. Wouldn't you agree? Good. I am so disappointed in you two. I thought you were more than these criminals. But I can see that I was wrong, and that is something I do not say often. So, I'm going to purchase this rat hole. It'll cost me what I have in my pocket. Maybe a little less. Look at me. Look at me. I will have you dismantle this place with your bare hands until there's nothing left but rock and rubble. And when your friends and family see it, they will know that you destroyed a part of their community because of your selfishness. Vete al diablo, señor Vincent. Old chums. Last, and most certainly least, you ride into my town like barbarians of old to harry a civilized world. Barbarians. I like that. It is befitting. What was that? Um, live by the sword, die by the sword, I believe that's it. It's time to put your metal where your mouth is. Step outside. Settle this like men. Shall we? Go after them. We will. We need to take that kid's warning serious. Waco, you want to go take a look and see how many party goers we need to plan for? He is an absolute monster. He means every word. If we get out of this, we need to get you out of this town. I am not leaving. Don't look good. He's out there with the sheriff, that snake deputy, and a whole mess of men. They're armed to the teeth, and they're ready to shoot. Maybe they would listen to me. Maybe I could reason with them. You got away with words, but he wouldn't listen, even if your tongue was made of pure silver. He's right. Vincent only speaks one language. Gold. We could go out fighting. We have the advantage being in here. We can start shooting and see what happens. Slow down, Pancho. Absolutely not. That would risk Lizzie being caught in the crossfire. Come on out, boy! If Gold is all he understands, I say we go speak his language. Okay. I think I like where you're going with this. You with me? Till the end. What are you doing? If we walk out there wearing irons, we'd be dead on the doorstep. This is the only way we're going to get close. To the what? Bargain. You ready? Let's go. Ahead. Wait. If I'm dying, I'm going out an honest man. Oh, shit, Waco. <laughs> All right, let's not go out there too pretty. Rub some dirt on your face, then let me do the talking.
right, we're coming out. We ain't wearing guns. All right. You just want to talk. No, come talk. The sheriff, you used to be a gunfighter. Used to be. You still fast? One way to find out. All right, listen, we're going to come closer. What I got to say is for your ears and for Mr. Vincent. Come slow. But we're in your care. On your honor. As a lawman and a fellow gunfighter. Shoot them. They're unarmed. Sheriff? They're unarmed. Mr. Vincent. All right, that's far enough, boys. Keep them hands up and speak your peace. I don't think we have to argue our innocence. Any doubts on that front, our boots would be kissing the sky already. So for now, we'd just like to make a deal with Mr. Vincent. And why would I want to waste my breath with you gone, Goslins? You know who my partner is? I do not. I do. I bet you do. It's the Waco Kid, bare knuckle boxer. Old champion. I'm not that old. Too old. One foot in the grave. I only need one foot to dance around you in the ring, big fella. Looked up to you. Till you lost. Got no respect for losers. You gonna ride a man off for one loss after a career of wins? You are dumber than you look. And you look like you got a knife so dull you couldn't slice through hot butter. Uh -uh. All right. Somebody want to please explain the value of an old, broken down boxer to Thaddeus Vincent? Hmm? You may not have heard of him from behind your ivory walls, but I'd bet high that all these men and all the men in your surrounding counties know who he is. Sheriff? Sure. Yeah, I knew him on site. I saw him fight a while back. Man, he's got something special. Well, shit, I might blush. So, you announce a prize fight. Come back at the Waco Kid. I promise you, you'll see more money and more people flowing through this town in one day than you've seen in years. And the opponent? The big guy seems up for it. He is big. Long way to the ground. <laughs> He'll kill you. I've heard that a lot. So if I agree, what's your end of the bargain? Now first off, we walk away. And you leave all these folks in this cantina alone. Me and Waco started this fight. We'll finish it. And? And if Waco wins, you pay us the Morales bounty. No matter what happens, you keep all the fight money. You never see us again. What's to keep you from rigging it? That Waco's too bullheaded to throw a fight. By the look in his eyes, he knows he'll never get this chance again. I don't know how to take that. It's okay. What of Miss O'Rourke and her concerns for my own? Hmm. My family. It's not our problem. We just came here to make a buck. You want this town, it's all yours. We just want what we're owed. All right. What's your answer, Mr. Vincent? Well, I do love money. <laughs> yes, you do. Let's have ourselves a prize fight. What do you guys say? Yeah! <laughs> it would be a very bad idea to double cross me, boys. We'll keep that in mind. Hmm. Kill him the ring. My pleasure. 
That's my boy. Well, hello there, Mastermind. How's the plan going? Good, I suppose. That is to say, we have one. But, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure you and Dutch have had many an adventure where death was on the line, but <clears throat> this is my first. And I have to admit, I'm quite nervous. Nervous is a good thing means you're smart enough to worry about staying alive. Are you nervous? Every time. You just get used to it. If I'm being honest, I'm most worried about you. Me? Why me? Well, to hear Dutch and Lita talk in there, there's no gate you wouldn't storm, but... You'll be all alone to fight that monster. I got Caleb in my corner. You know what I mean. Be honest, I'm never alone in there. Maybe my first fight as a kid, but after I lost to that guy, he was with me up here. And then the next fighter joined, and then the next, win or lose, they all tell me how to beat the next guy. I imagine it gets pretty crowded in there. You can't never have enough good ideas going around in your head when those fists start to fly. Ma'am, just fella bothering you? Oh, no more than usual. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Yeah, not really. They're just uh, discussing the details. Ah, I'd better go play referee. <laughs> Gentlemen. Ma'am. Is it a good plan? I would say it's, uh, it's south of good, but it's north of dying. Better than most, I guess. But I like our chances. Ever the gambler. I just trusted my gut. That's what led me to you. No, actually a bulletin for a hot meal is what led you to me. I was hungry, but I trusted my gut. You know, if it goes to hell for either of us tomorrow, I'd be proud to say I bit the ground doing the right thing. Well, Here's to trust in our gut and staying above snakes. Amen. All right. <laughs> 
Picard. Hey, Mark! Well, he definitely got the crowds out for you. Man's good at two things, making money and being oilier than snake shit. <laughs> well, you got any last uh, nuggets of wisdom for me? Wait, I know, I know. Don't overdo it. Are you kidding me? You seen that Clydesdale you're fighting? Yeah. You overdo the hell out of it. You're right, good afternoon, and it's going to be a good afternoon. It's good to see you on this fine day, filled with first-rate entertainment, provided, I should acknowledge, through the generosity of Mr. Thaddeus Vincent. Now, I know that we've got a big prize fight coming up, and so do you, but that's coming up in just a little while because the first bout on today's match will be this one featuring a young man whose fists are as smooth as honey. I'm talking about Sweetie Pete. Yeah! <laughs> and in this corner, his opponent. Your man's in the prelims too? Well, maybe old Sweetie Pete will knock him out. I'll win, won't even have to throw a punch. At least you can see what you're up against. All right, fellas, shake hands. And give me a head start. Looks like you have to fight your own battles. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Me either. Sorry, I'm late. What did I miss? Just a little glimpse into my future. <laughs> what? Nothing. Listen, I need you to make sure you take care of this man, OK? All right. Wait, wait, wait. Hold this. All right. And remember. I know. I got, I got it, it from, from a, a girl, girl in, in Texas. Texas. Yeah. I got you. Let's go. You got right with God, old man. You ain't leaving this ring. All I've heard is bark from you. Let's see if you can bite. Well, why don't you save him for the fight? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've been waiting for for hardly any time at all. You've got yourself a couple of real contenders here. Allow me to introduce our challenger, the bare knuckle beast himself. The man with fists like a pair of six guns. Here to make a wallop of a comeback, we have the legend of the frontier himself, the Waco Kid. I think your town likes me. Okay, come on in, shake hands. Now, show God you got some tact before you go to meet him. All right, that's it. And give me a head start.
Gotcha. Over here. There you are. How's Waco? Oh, he's fine. Fight just started when I left. Would you worry about him? He can take care of himself. How far is the mine from here? No far. Look. Boy, it sure would be nice if those two fellows were the only ones I had to deal with. Safe to assume they're not. Dutch, you think you can handle them? Did, uh, did Caleb say whether or not these boys know anything about the children? They know. They will likely know any more of them than usual. Yeah, well, that ain't gonna be a problem. Good. We'll make our way to the holding cell and meet you back here with the children. All right, now listen. You two wait for my signal. When you hear it, you move. Got it? Be careful. The mine's closed, old man. You boys might want to get healed. gotten quite handy with these. It's not quite what I meant by stick. You seen that Dutch fellow around here anywhere? I'm just watching the fight, same as you. Let me guess. You have absolutely no idea where he could have gotten off to. Nope. You have no spine.
Mr. Rosemary, you came. Of course I did. Let us hurry. We haven't much time to spare. Everyone, my name is Rosemary, and this is Lita. You'll need to do everything exactly as we say, all right? Keep your heads down. We'll be moving very quickly, and we're not stopping until we reach the train station. Let's go. Be quick and quiet as you can. His ribs? No, his jaw. He's not slowing down either. But I am. Uh, I don't think I can last too many more rounds. Have you seen anything fishy? I, I saw the, the deputy head off. You think he's headed to the mines? I don't, I don't know, but Dutch can take care of himself. Crowding me. Deputy said you'd be here. <laughs> what? Kids okay? Good. Good job, ladies. Was that the last of them? Yeah, I reckon so. Should be smooth sailing from here on out. Follow me. Boys and girls, you ready to make your parents? Your Uncle Zeke's been dying to shoot this thing. <laughs> You're supposed to duck. Run! Here she comes, Josh! <laughs> Somebody trusted that idiot with a Gatlin gun. How are we supposed to get out of this? You can hide behind that rock all you want, you coward. I got enough ammo and grit to blast a hole clean through you. <laughs> There's two ways back to town. I want you to take the kid the long way. I'll keep his head down. Pardon me. We can't just leave you here! You have to! You said 
to yourself. These kids are the most important thing. Now, I want you to wait for my signal. You just run. Hey, children, get ready! <laughs> ready? Go! Go, go!
Wake go! I'm afraid I'm all you get. Your friend's as good as worm food already. I'd be more than happy to arrange a reunion if you'd like. Damn shame. Old Cal's Bane Morales taken out by a no good bounty hunter the likes of you. That boy rode with me for a long time before I picked up this badge. Taught the boy everything he knew. Always figured I'd have to test myself against him one day. But I reckon you'll have to do. You ready? You gonna let me check this pistol, make sure I got bullets? <laughs> well now, that's another real goddamn shame, ain't it? We go when this hits the ground. Don't overdo it. Huh? See why Waco likes to do that. <laughs> what I miss? Your cue. I'm sorry. People kept trying to kill me. What about the children? Are they safe? They are. Well, hell. Oh, we might have actually saved the day. <laughs> Dutch? I'm empty. How hard? How hard is it for you, nipent, Jasper, vagrant sons of bitches? To understand. What's that mean? I have no idea. Well, it's... I'll explain later. I am civilization! I have put so many of you into the ground! What's three more? Nice shot, kid. enough to cover Morales' bounty? That's more than enough. I'd say that'll do. But are you sure the folks around here ain't gonna need this to help y'all get back on your feet? No, senores. You freed this town from debt. We get to keep all that we have and all that we earn. And we'll never forget you for that. It was an honor. Working with both of you. You too, Caleb. <laughs> oh, you. Hasta luego. How are we supposed to carry this? Maybe they'll let us keep the wheelbarrow. How are we going to pull a wheelbarrow with our horses? Seems you boys can afford a wagon now. Dutch, wait, go. I just came to say goodbye and to thank you both. We did a good thing in this town. Because of you both, we've saved children's lives. Oh, stop it. People are gonna think we're going soft. We're tenderized. <laughs> Look, we just did what was right. You know, if enough of that goes around, it might be a good country after all. 
So, what's next for you? Well, I must say I have been a bit inspired. Not that I didn't expect adventure, but this little journey has excited me to my cause. There are still plenty of children to find in plenty of towns, so I am catching a train to Oklahoma tomorrow. And who knows, maybe our paths will cross again. Well, I hope so. Me too, Miss Rosemary. Dutch, I feel like we did a whole lot of good. Almost like almost like we're lawmen ourselves. Yeah, maybe. And who knows, maybe this place will become the safe, sleepy little town the deputy said he was going to be. Yep. I imagine the next sheriff won't have any trouble. All right, enough chit-chat. We'll find some bags to put in this gold. What happened to our gold? What? Stop! Uh, uh. Take three. <laughs> Don't come out, they'll shoot. All right, so Kayla's mess up was way worse. Yeah, it was. I blew it, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just dreaming about this girl I know down in Saltillo. She could do things with her one good arm to make you forget about that hair lip. This is the wordiest bit of today. So, Five acting chops. Take one. Chops, chops. All right. Ten. Hubert, take one. Hubert. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. <coughs> Let's wait for that Yes, in composed. That's right. And uh, I told yeah. you once, you son of a bitch, I'm the best there's ever been. Blah, blah. Right, we need to uphold the laws in this town. If for no other reason, do it for the beeping that you hear in the background. Right? I would agree. Can I my gun back, please? That's just reckless. If he wakes up at midnight, he wants a glass of warm milk, he comes in here, steps on a bullet, he's gonna blame me, but it's your fault. Just remember that. Symbolized by <laughs> floods and so on is to destroy the Christ idea. Now they're not ready to go to summon a demon or something. <laughs> right, here we go. Love letters from a concerned citizen. Oh, there's this girl in Abilene, she used to write me twice a week. <laughs> but I know where the children are. Reset. You do. I always forget them. Let's hold for a second. We'll wait for the worst of that plane. You mother. That was good. We got both of those lines. They're provided for. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you went a lot longer the last time. Let's <laughs> reset from the top. Actually, no. Well, hmm? No, actually, a bulletin for a hot meal is what led you to me. <laughs> My God, I'm telling you, dude, I'm on point. We go when this hits the ground. He drops the coin. Scene 28, evil, take three. Call me evil. Camera set. Rude. Hello. Hello, Katie. Katie. <laughs> <laughs> the cowardice of some men, it saddens me. I completely did that backwards. Right. The goal. <laughs> okay. Do you want to take it from the top? <laughs> I said it backwards. And that entertainment is provided by a very special host, and I'm talking about our friend 
Francois Parsunaman. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. Now listen here, you mother. Hello, boys and girls. You ready to meet your parents? Your uncle Zeke's been dead. Yep, yep, yep. Your uncle Zeke's. That's okay. Speed. Speed. 35, direction after slate was called. Take three. <laughs> oh. That's no life fire? No, no life fire. I'm just shouting bang like an asshole. <laughs>